Hi. In this tutorial I will be redoing the audio on this 360 VR video of us running around at AudioEase. I will be using the 360 Pan Suite version 2 and Reaper. There's another version of this video where I'll be using Pro Tools HD. So here's Reaper and lined up here I have the video, some footsteps recorded in ambisonics, three dialogue tracks which sound like this, Ja, hier is hij. Kom je helpen? Yo. A piano track and a monitor channel. And uh, in my monitor channel, I have inserted a 360 monitor that is nine channels. And I like to produce ambisonics in as wide a format as possible, so I can still go to Facebook and YouTube. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll create a track for my reverb. I must select ten channels because that's the closest to nine channels that Reaper will do, and I'll call it my ref. And on it I will insert a 360 reverb of nine channels wide. Now this is the reverb, and I'll call it my ref. Now this brand new convolution reverb has a concert hall category, and all IRs in here are newly made for this verb, using an ambisonics microphone, which means the acoustics will be properly ambisonics and turning your head while viewing will sound completely natural. There are all sorts of domestic spaces and outdoor spaces. We have vehicles, and from the work category I'll select the empty shop, which kind of resembles the space in my video. Okay, I'll uh, put it away for now and I'll insert my first panners on my dialogue tracks. The three dialogue tracks will be moving around. The first one is called Arjun, and I'll switch it into the 360 reverb. So I have a private line to the reverb. Next is Jere. I'll make that puck green. Switch it into the reverb. And the third dialogue track is the track of Max. A blue puck. And I'll switch it into the reverb. Finally, on my stereo piano track, I will insert a stereo to nine channel panner. Okay, now I want to show you a couple of preferences that I like to set for this type of work. This is the most important one. When recording automation, do not ad add additional points. And in the buffering section, you want to uncheck the anticipate checkbox. And apply. I'll bring up the video window now. This is where I'll be doing all my work. So first I'll slide the piano pucks over to the piano I see there in the video. And they're not moving around so I'll make them invisible. I can show and hide the grid here as well. Max will be appearing from this door, Jere will appear from there, and I'm hidden over there. Okay, I'll switch the three dialogue tracks into touch mode. And then I'll bring up the nudge window, which is set to a thousand milliseconds, a full second of nudge time. Now when I nudge to the right, I will be the first to appear. So I'll slide my puck over to my face. And then I'll nudge right again, slide it over, and you see the curve appearing already. Now for this transition of me around the back, I'll just back up a little bit, place the puck there, then progress a few frames 
and now I will have a nice and tight transition around the back. There we go. Yere is appearing. It is very important to keep the puck on the source at all times, because the viewer can decide to look straight at one of these, and then the sound should sit right in the middle. Max is appearing. Walking really close by the microphone. And then I disappear behind the stairs there in that doorway. Max is going there too. And now Jere follows. And Jere is gone too. Okay, let's back it up. Hey Jere, kun jij even helpen? Okay, so that was both too long a reverb, and it also didn't sound distant enough. First, I'll check the distance. When I click here. Three faders appear, gain, distance and reverb width. I can automate my distance with this slider here. First I'll tone down the length of that reverb a bit. And then I'll just automate as we go. Back up that uh, for that line of Jere, he should appear a bit more distant. Yes, I come around. Here above the top. Let's do Max. Volgens mij was die ergens daarachter, bij die groene deur ergens. Okay, and finally that line of, of myself should sound really distant. So that's it. Now I will be working on the width of the reverb a little bit. The points where I disappear or where Jere disappears behind a wall, I want to, the reverb to sound a little bit more narrow. Something like that. And I'll show you later why. Okay, these footsteps, a full ambisonics Foley recording, I want into the reverb as well. So I'll send them to my ref's input. This is the first track that I'll send to the input of the reverb. So now the footsteps start to sound in the same space. Okay, let's open up the monitor and look around a little bit so we can appreciate the difference between the tightness of the reverb on my line behind the wall and Jere's footsteps and voice in the main room.
OK. Now I'm going to bypass the monitor and render out the tracks. So the first I'm going to call MB2 because of its uh, second order ambisonics. And I'll make a 10 channel render. And the next render I'll make is a 4 channel one for first order ambisonics. This one I'll use for YouTube. And that's it. I'll be showing you in another video how to marry this audio to the video and then upload it to either YouTube or Facebook. Thanks for watching. Bye.